Nets beat the Celtics in a five-game gentleman sweep. See these two high-powered offenses average the most combined points per game of any two teams in a playoff series in 50 years. But look at Harden grabbing the hamstring first minute of the game. That was an issue earlier this season for Harden. Goes to the locker room, does not return, played just 43 seconds, left the arena to get an MRI before the game ended. Bucks dominated the paint early. P.J. Tucker got the start up top for Giannis Antetokounmpo. Bucks go up five. Time winding down in the first quarter. Game tied at 30. Antetokounmpo sees a lane and takes it. 22 points in the paint in the first quarter for Milwaukee. Tied for the most by any team in the first quarter this postseason. Their size, their biggest advantage over Brooklyn. Bucks three-point shooting, that was a disadvantage. Six for 30 from beyond the arc on the game. Neil, is that bad? Not good. No, it's 20%. Six made three-pointers is their second lowest in any game this season. Second quarter. Here come the Nets, Kyrie Irving. Nets go up two. They started the quarter on an 8-0 run. Five minutes to play in the half. Nets up three. Durant spinning and winning on Tucker. Durant 12 points in the half. Two minutes to go now. Nets up six. Joe Harris to Irving. Irving game high 20 in the first half. Harris threw in 19 for the game. Five triples. Nets by two at the break. Third quarter. Nets by three. Durant going pick and roll with Blake Griffin who has emerged as a force in this series. 18 points, 14 rebounds. Picked up the scoring slack with Harden out. But here comes Anthony Cooper going right at Griffin. He had 34 points and 11 boards. Three-point game. 2-10 to go in the third. Six-point game now. Landry Shamit to Irving. It was just 3 for 11 from 3, but it felt like better than that. The Nets 15 of 40 from 3 as a team. Anthony DeCoupo turns it over. Irving to Shamit for the dunk. And the Nets push the lead to 11. Final seconds of the third. Durant working on Anthony DeCoupo. Durant for 3. 13 points in the third quarter. Nets up by 14 after 3. To the fourth. Nets up 10. It's winning time. Durant shot 12 for 25. And suing Bucks possession. Irving comes up with a loose ball. The flip to Durant trailing. Big finish. Eight assists, 25 points for Irving. Durant, 29 points and 10 rebounds. It's Brooklyn in the house, without a doubt. Nets take game one. It sucks. It sucks out because I want, I want him to be out there. I know how much he cares. I know how much he wants to be in this moment. Um, it sucks. But I think coaches, the coaching staff did a great job of moving forward, and guys came in and just tried to play extremely hard. We didn't care about anything else but playing and executing the game plan and just, you know, leaving it all out there. I hope we're going to shoot the ball better. You never know what's going to happen, but I hope that once the game two, we're going to shoot the ball better as a team. We're going, we're going to make, hopefully we can make more threes, uh, play better defense, and uh, give ourselves a chance to win the game. So Harden goes down early. But they had his back. Blake Griffin, Joe Harris, Mike James all stepped up big for the Nets. The team's non-big three players scored 61 points, 23 more than they averaged in the first round against the Celtics. They also made six more threes than they averaged. What can the Bucks do to win this series? Giannis has to be a superstar. He has to be a superstar. Those same numbers that you see from him during the regular season, he's got to do that in the playoffs. But here's what he has to do. He's the only person, first of all, nobody, in my opinion, really has a chance to do it. But if anybody has a chance to defend uh, respectably against Kevin Durant, it's the Greek freak Giannis Antetokounmpo. The length, the athleticism, uh, he's got to show up and he's going to have to be a formidable opposition to KD. Because let me tell you something, Kyrie and James Harden are going to do their thing. But I think collectively Milwaukee's defense could hang tough. I think KD is going to be the difference maker. You cannot let him destroy you at his will. Somebody's going to have to try to put him in check in order to knock off the Brooklyn Nets. That's what it's going to come down to. The difference maker is going to be James Harden because he can run D'Antoni's system now with D'Antoni on the bench there under Steve Nash, uh, except instead of second-rate weapons, he has KD and Kyrie. And by the way, guys like Joe Harris, his fourth option, this is what the Bucs can do, Stephen A. They can be very, very aggressive offensively early in the series. And the reason I say that is because early on, before I really believed in the Nets, their defense was the worst of all time. They're the best offense of all time, literally, per 100 possessions, and the worst defense of all time. And within two or three weeks, they had a respectable enough defense, sort of mid-pack defense.
Well, More everyone like got healthy that, again, and yeah. they got to and and now they got to get it together defensively. The offense is fine. I mean, it could be better, but it'll get better. The question is, has there been enough time for that defense to start getting connected? If the answer is no, the Nets have to be, the Bucks have to be extremely aggressive offensively early in the series, especially, and maybe they can jump up two games to one and have a chance to win it. Because if they're not, the Nets will roll them. All right, we'll keep going, guys. Uh, earlier this week, we saw Trey Young take a bow. Stephen A. remembers on one of basketball's biggest stages after knocking at the Knicks in the Garden, and Ben Simmons. Triple double helping route the Wizards. I look at the Los Angeles Lakers, and they were my favorites coming into the season because I assumed that Anthony Davis was healthy. It'd be one thing if he was just nicked and knacked, and that was it. This is, you know, that calf injury. We're talking about an Achilles. Stuff sounds too similar to what K KD, Kevin Durant, had to endure with him being out. It could be a month. It could be two months. It could be three months. We just don't know at this particular moment in time, and we certainly don't know if he'll ever be 100%. Here's what I'm willing to tell you. There is not one single team in the NBA that can be less than 100% and beat the Brooklyn Nets. Not one. Nobody. I mean, their offense is just lethal. I'm calling them lethal weapon three, but I got to tell you something. When I look at uh, uh, Kyrie and the level of unselfishness that he is playing with right now in terms of getting other dudes involved and some of the things that some of the, some of the baskets he set up for other teammates, I'm looking at the great point guard play of James Harden. I'm fantasizing about what they'll be once KD comes back, assuming he comes back healthy. And if KD comes back healthy, I don't see how anybody can beat them because I don't think their defense is going to be as god-awful as it was earlier this season. And then not only that, I'm watching them get other people involved. TLC, Joe Harris, Jeff Green, and others. I'm watching them get other people involved, and I'm saying to myself, damn, you know what? Joe Harris is still getting some shots. Jeff Green is still getting some shots. TLC is still getting some shots. DeAndre Jordan has been a presence in the middle. We can't ignore it defensively, rebounding as well. Um, I'm just looking at them potentially. And let me not forget Landry Shamit as well, who can shoot the rock. They can go nine or ten deep. And I look at it from that standpoint. Bruce Brown can't forget about him either. I'm just looking at them and I'm saying, excuse me, who the hell's going to beat them? Because guess what? A lethal offense can make you tight. Once you're on offense, because you know you have to be close to perfect because these guys are so unstoppable on the offensive end of the floor themselves. That can make you tight. That can alter and compromise what you're trying to do offensively as a result of it. And then you won't be as effective as you're supposed to be. Now, with the Clippers last night, uh, minutes restriction. Listen, I love Ty Lue. He's a coach of the year candidate. I think he's doing a phenomenal job, and I'm very, very happy he got that job. But when he laughed at the reporter, because you know, this incredulous look because the reporter asked him about Paul George being out of the game. Look, man, minutes restrictions or not, you got to make sure Paul George is in the game around money time, particularly the way he was flowing last night. I thought that was a very legitimate question, and there was nothing to dismiss about that. But in the end, it didn't matter. The Brooklyn Nets are the best team in basketball at this particular moment in time. A month from now, two months from now, postseason time, we can revisit it. At this moment, the Brooklyn Nets – are the best team in the world. Yeah, I mean, look, if, if AD's not playing, I can't say the Lakers, right? But I'm assuming AD will play. They're taking precaution. They're, being, they're going to be extremely careful with AD. And what I've seen from this Lakers team this season, when AD's on the floor, is basically a continuation of last season. They went wire to wire as the best team in the Western Conference. They gentlemen swept the entire Western Conference, 4-1, 4-1, 4, -1, 4, -1, 4 -1. And then they didn't even get extended seven games in the finals. Now, let's take that team, clearly the best team in basketball, right? Like, listen to those facts. Did they get better or worse in the offseason? They got better. And they're the only team, when AD is healthy, that is absolutely elite on both ends of the floor, offense and defense. Now, we agree about Brooklyn's offense. I keep saying it. They, if aren't, they're not already, they will certainly, clearly, and by far, be the best offense of all time by the end of this season. Just want to mention, the best offense according to efficiency numbers, right, of all time occurred last season, the Dallas Mavericks, but and they were a good team. Uh, and Porzingis got hurt in that Clippers series, but they didn't come close to winning a championship because you also have to play defense. No team in the last 20 years has won a finals with a defense ranked under 11. 
And the Nets have been playing better defense. Harden's not wrong. He's like, we don't have to be amazing. We just have to be, you know, middle of the pack. He's right about that. But if they are, what I see is a clash of the Titans in the finals. Lakers, Clippers. And by the way, the win against the Clippers, no Paul George at the end of that game. And I know I, more than anyone, have been saying he has to prove it in the playoffs, Paul George. He looks like a man on a mission to me so far to try to prove that in the playoffs. Like, he's heard the criticism, and he wants to do something about it. Stephen A., he dropped, what, 12 points in five minutes in the fourth quarter? And one thing you and I definitely agree upon is even if there's a minutes restriction, we don't have to be fanatical about it. If it's a game like that and a dude is hot and you need him for a couple minutes at the end of the game, going over your minutes restrictions by 90 seconds or two minutes ain't going to result in an injury, you know, knock wood. It's not, I don't think, I don't believe that. And I think that that would have been the smart thing to do, but they didn't. And so the Nets won a game with, on a bad call on an offensive foul that shouldn't have been called on Kawhi Leonard. And without Paul George on the floor, they squeaked by a Clippers squad um, that also poses its own threats. I'd say the Nets are, are probably going to come out of the East. I can't say if AD's healthy, they're the best team in the world right now. Well, I can. I can. The way that they're looking, they've beaten everybody that matters right in front of them. Utah Jazz have been on a torrid stretch, winning like 20 or 20, uh, 19 of the last 20 or 20 of their last 21 games. Uh, well, one of those losses were to the Brooklyn Nets by 34. By 34. You know, they've beaten everybody in their path, beating both L.A. teams, beating, you know, Golden State, beating Indiana, beat Boston, uh, anybody that stands in their way. And the better the team is, the better Brooklyn plays against them. It seems like the teams that have the best shot are the teams that are stinking up the joint because they might play down to the competition, feeling they could take a night off or whatever. But they get up, they rise to the occasion. And I just can't say enough about what I'm seeing from Kyrie and James Harden. They've been absolutely sensational. And Kevin Durant is not a subtraction. He's not a minus in any way because this brother could put up 30 on 15 or 16 shots. That's how lethal Kevin Durant yeah, the is. Fact That's that how doing efficient it, he is. The fact that they're doing it without KD is the key because, yeah, when AD gets back, the Lakers are different. But, my God, when KD gets back, and if he gets back as himself, he's also a defensive force. And this year, even when he hasn't been, he's at least accepted the assignment. Who's the other team's best perimeter player? Fine, I'll guard him. So, yes, I do think if the Nets are healthy, they're going to get out of the East. I believe that, especially the way they've been playing defense recently, although the Sixers will have something to say about it. 